So things are really busy. I'm off to the States on Sunday. I can't believe that it's come around this quick. Sunday we're off. I have been spending a lot of time over the last few days trying to schedule up listings for when I'm away. I want 10 listings to go live on my eBay page for the 10 to 12 days that I'm not gonna be on eBay. So that's about 120 listings that I've tried to get up. And uh, that's been a bunch of work considering I'm still trying to do my normal 10 a day for the present day. And when it comes to this sort of a task, the only thing I've ever thought that's really been viable to be able to make sure it gets done is selling DVDs and video games and listing those up. So that's what's been taking up a lot of my time this week. And I reckon we've been able to sort it out today. I made a really good DVD purchase of about 50 listings and uh, I really realized in that process that there was never a video where I'd kind of unpacked everything that goes through my mind when it comes to sourcing a DVD. The process that I go through to list up a DVD to actually get it to go on to sell and then obviously how to ship it off as well. So we're going to cover all of that in this video today. Hopefully it can help you out there. If you're a new seller, let me know in the comments below. Look, I think that DVDs are a great category to focus on. They're easy to find, easy to list, easy to ship. So uh, the first thing that we're going to have a look at is the characteristics that I look for. All right, so the first thing that I want to have a chat about is the bee's knees when it comes to DVDs, and uh, it is the TV series box set. These are the things you want to be finding if you're doing DVDs. If you do no more than just sell TV series box sets, you're going to be doing yourself some very good numbers on eBay. So I always look for these first and foremost. If they're ever in a casing like this, then that's a big win. I'm going to pick that up every time if it's between sort of $5 to $10. I don't even bother comping it up. I just know that something like this, a complete series, seasons one to three, that is going to go for some great money on eBay. So I think it's worth about $35, something like that. And I would have only paid about $10 at most for it in the thrift. The other one I pay attention to is region codes. Now I'll put a little table up here for you to have a look at, but there's actually 10 different region codes to know. And uh, look, if you're in Australia, pretty much the only region you need to look for is region four, because that is what predominantly plays on our DVD players here in Australia. But if you're overseas, region one for US, and region two for Europe and Japan. So I will actually go ahead now and source those region one and twos because I am pretty much always putting them up with international postage on. And I have often sold a few that do go internationally. So uh, just focus on the country that you're in and the, the region code that is appropriate and, and stick with that method. I think if you're new to reselling here in Australia, don't branch into any other different regions if you're finding those DVDs, just stick to region four, you'll generally do okay. This is another big one four disc set. So I always look for multiple discs in a DVD. If it's got multiple, it generally means that it's gonna comp out to be worth a few more dollars. Not every time you've always got to do your comp research, but that sort of stuff there, four disc set, I'm always looking for that. It generally does pretty well. The other thing you wanna look for is anything that says complete or season. So a perfect example of that would be Kojak, uh, the complete series, like that would be something. If I saw that in an op shop, I'd be pretty much buying that straight away. Uh, and then anything that says season on it as well. So if I can find something like this, for instance, over here, the Big Bang Theory, if I was scanning through and I saw fourth season, fifth season, I'd be scanning those up straight away. So as you can see, a lot of the stuff that I have is pretty much all TV series and they generally do the best on eBay. Oh, this is also really good too, like the 12th season, the complete 12th season of, of NCIS. If you're buying individual TV seasons and you don't have a big bundle to play with, just find the ones that are the latter part. So maybe uh, seasons 8 to 12 would be something that I would consider if it was a 12 season complete set. Um, just grab those later ones and they generally price up for more because people are trying to complete their collections. Another big one too is anything that might be brand new and sealed. So there it is there, brand new and sealed. Like I'll almost scan a DVD rack just to find those first and then I'll do a bit of a comp up just to see what they were worth. So that's another good one to find. Um, like that sort of a TV show, brand new sealed might go for $15 and you could find it for a dollar. And I think that's definitely worthwhile. We get a lot of questions of people asking me about quality as well. Like when you find that DVD, like a 12th season NCIS, how do you know if you should grab it if there's some marks on it? Well, I go with the process of no scratch, no worries. That's really the true test. I don't sit there and I don't play all these DVDs just to test them and see how they work because I'd still be doing that two years into the game and I wouldn't have listed anything. It takes a very long time to do that. But if you go with the no scratch, no worries, you put your returns up on eBay and allow for that. If there are any issues down the line, that'd be the best way to go about it. One other little tip as well would be to actually look for the obscure titles, even the movies. Look for the obscure movies that you've never heard of before. Maybe some actors you've never heard of either. I've actually gone ahead and scanned a few of those 
and I've realized that they do go for some pretty decent money as well. I mean, not every single time by all means, but if you do have that extra spare moment, just, just search up a few different titles. You'd be amazed at what some of these DVDs are worth. I've uncovered DVDs upwards of 50 to $100 and they're worth a dollar in the thrift store. So it is a timely process. I actually made a video where I scanned every single DVD in a thrift store and I uncovered some absolute gems. It was a real eye opener, but you don't always have the time to do that. But um, I definitely still think it's fun to do every now and again. Now, the next one is your purchase price. Try not to spend any more than $2 per DVD. If you're not seeing that price point, if you're seeing it more expensive than that wherever you are, then I would walk away and I would try to find a cheaper price point elsewhere. You can always jump on a Facebook Marketplace. I've got a video of how I do wholesale purchasing of DVDs on Facebook Marketplace. And often at times you're getting them for around 50 cents. There's a little bit more legwork to it. The video I linked in the description below will go through that process for you to show you what to do. But don't ever feel the need to have to pay any more unless it's maybe a TV series box set. Sometimes I'm paying up a little bit more to get my hands on those because they're just worth a whole lot more. But generally speaking, $2 or less. And then when you're trying to find a comp price that actually goes for some good money, I always work off a $10 minimum sale price. So you've always got fees, you've always got postage to take into consideration. That really whittles it down. But if you're buying it for two, selling it for 10 and an absolute minimum, you're generally gonna do yourself some pretty good numbers. I put a little screen grab here of just the process of how to do your comp searching for a DVD. And it's very simple. There's a barcode scanner uh, on your eBay app and you can literally click on that little camera icon in the top right hand corner. And then from there, find your DVD and just do a barcode scan. And then you go into a filter, you work your way down to sold items and that will give you a filtered sold search of the previously sold items for that exact DVD, working off the barcode that you initially scanned. So look, I've done that thousands of times, searched and, and you build up a learning and an understanding of how much certain DVDs are worth. And now the next thing is to how to title up your DVD listings to make sure they are, I guess, set up to sell because it's a very important aspect to your eBay listing is to get your title correct. And a perfect example is to have a look at my One Tree Hill listing on my eBay page. I've basically put the title of the actual TV show first, one Tree Hill, and then I've done complete series season one to nine. So I basically stipulated how many seasons you're playing with. And I always write those keywords that I spoke of earlier, complete series. If it is a complete series box set, I'm putting in the words complete series, then I'm stipulating the number of seasons that are in it. And then I'm saying DVD, which is obviously a key search term. And then I'm putting in the region code, region four. VGC is just code for very good condition. If it is in very good condition, I will often write that as well. And then I personally like to fill out my title characters as much as I possibly can. And if I've got leftover space from that, I'll always put in free postage, which because that is the model that I go by. It's free postage for all of my listings. So One Tree Hill, complete series, season one to nine, DVD, region four, very good condition, free postage. Now I kind of try and replicate that for every single one of my listings. I won't go into the detail around the photos required as well, because I feel like for DVDs, it is pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure that you're taking enough photos of the case and of the individual disc and then flip it over for the quality of the disc as well. Um, and you should be fine with that. When it comes to postage, I use the Australia Post medium size tracked envelope. These things are an absolute lifesaver because they do have the tracking component. And for me as a seller, I just really wanna make sure that I've got tracking for every single one of my sales. So I'm always gonna use that. It costs $4.50, you can buy them in bulk. I buy packs of 10 for about 45 bucks. I want the Australia Post band five discount as well. So take that into consideration. Um, but you've always got some pretty good, uh, I guess, a surety when it comes to posting your DVDs with the Tract. You can do it for cheaper. You can do it for about $2.80 with just a standard envelope. That works fine as well. I've never had any issues just whacking one of these into one of those and it being completely fine from a sense of, um, I guess, quality upon arrival. I've never been damaged. They've always been fine, so don't fear that. If you're getting a big uh, TV series box set, I always put a light film or bubble wrap around this and put it into a small satchel. Um, that always works pretty well for me. If I go over five DVDs for an order, I'll put it into a medium satchel. That goes for about 10 to $12. So you're never paying too much to ship off a DVD and there's never really too much prep work to actually get the job done either. So there you go, guys. These are all the DVDs that I'm gonna go ahead and list up so I can go over to America and know that all of these DVDs will hopefully give me a few dollars while I'm away. There's a lot here to work through. We're doing pretty well on the listing front. I'm generally doing 10 a day, plus all of these listings that I need to whack into the system. So that'll do me. Appreciate your support. Thanks for being here. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you on Thursday for a trip to the thrift.